I'd like, now I'd like to invite Mr. Ian Bushfield, the Executive Director of British Columbia Humanist Association, to give our second speech. Thank you. Thank you, Gorge. Before I begin my prepared remarks, I want to make two quick statements. First, I want to recognize that we are on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people. It's important to recognize, I believe, that in light of the need for peace today. I was asked to speak by Teresa and we sort of agreed a title of a talk, War's Waste of Human Potential. And in light of the last week, I sort of just revised that entire topic and I realized I don't know anything about war's waste of human potential. I've lived in Canada for almost all of my life. That privilege to live here in these mostly peaceful times has meant that the realities of conflict and war the lived experiences that so many people face on a day-by-day -day basis are neither real nor tangible in any way for me. So it's incredibly easy for me to understand from the sort of academic point of view that war and conflict and deaths in uh, conflicts are becoming less frequent and they're becoming and their wars are taking fewer and fewer lives. But those numbers mean very little to the families that flee a civil war in Syria to the people fleeing Boko Haram in Africa and Central Africa, or to the countless numbers of people being persecuted by their government, by the police, or even just by their neighbors, and having no recourse to justice around the world. In the past few months, after Brexit, after the Front National grew in France, and after Trump, expo these events have exposed the sort of bitter nationalistic sentiments that are just always there in us and in our society, just below the surface. And that bigotry is on the rise again, and it shows no signs of abating. We've seen this dark path as a species before, and we know where it leads, and it's not good. These forces of pessimism, of fear, of irrationality, of pure, unadulterated hate and bigotry, aren't showing no signs of abating. The future seems far more uncertain and more destined to renewed conflict and to greater suffering. As the executive director of the BC Humanist Association, I've watched these un events unfold with just a state of terrified shock. Our organization represents those values, reason, reason compassion, and hope that seem to be discarded by so much of the electorate in the Western world today. So I think it's more important than ever that we stop for a minute and to remember and to reflect those forgotten victims of conflicts. The war started by these demigods and these tyrants, or to stop them, always come with a big cost. And it's cost not just to the men and women and children we asked to serve in the military, but to the innocent people who deserve the freedom to live out their lives in peace and a peace that we have been able to take for granted here. So we're taking this moment today, a day set aside for remembering those who've served in combat, to also remember those who've paid the cost of combat. And while some of those who served did not choose to, none of those civilians sought to be involved in a conflict that cost them their lives. As a humanist, I believe this is the one life we have, so I see every lost life as a needless tragedy. It's a tragedy that each of us can understand because every one of those lives is a lost potential. It's one less mind to discover something new about the world. It's one less smile to brighten someone's day. And it's one less person to love or to be loved. So I wanna close by challenging each and every one of you, just like Teresa did, not to let the importance of this day end with just the memory of those losses. We must continue the struggle and the effort to achieve a more peaceful future where lives are not so needlessly wasted. We've come so far in recent years that we cannot let anything set back the forces of peace, justice, and progress. We cannot let ignorance drive us or divide us. We must defend the importance of reason and science in understanding the world. We must continue to show compassion for people regardless of where they were born, the gender they identify as, their religion, the color of their skin, who they're attracted to, or any other meaningless divide we draw between ourselves. We must challenge injustice 
and the systematic oppression of the First Nations people in this country, of people of color, of women, of the LGBT community, of people with disabilities, and we must always stand up for equality. Even in these darkest days, where times are so uncertain, we must hold out hope that our efforts for love and peace will not be in vain. Thank you.